Welcome back to another example from chapter 7. So we have a mass circling, and that should immediately remind you of chapter 6 problems. And we're told that the mass is going 9 meters per second at the bottom of the circle. So the speed here at the bottom is 9 meters per second, and it will be going around, and we're trying to figure out what happens to the speed at the top of the circle. So V final is unknown. Now, I want us to recognize something important here. In this problem, we are dealing with a change to the speed because gravity is kind of slowing us down, and we'll see how that works in energy problems. We actually can't solve this one with our Chapter 6 tools because the way in which the... Um, forces are acting here as we go around at different angles compared to the bottom and the top, which we have asked about, that would actually require calculus to handle properly. So we've been limited in chapter six, and in this particular case, energy techniques allow us to do more than what we had been doing. So we can make a list of the given information here. The mass is two kilograms. You'll notice we use that a lot just because it makes our math work out a little bit simpler, but we don't want to get used to that in case we just default to plugging in two and we have a mass of six kilograms or eight kilograms. And the 1.2 meter long string, it is worth us recognizing that the string is attached only in one spot. And so this is 1.2 meters from the center to the bottom which means that the height difference between what we think of as before and what we think of as after, the height difference is twice that, or 2.4 meters. And that becomes a lot clearer if we actually draw the picture out and recognize that we're comparing the radius with the diameter of this circle. The initial speed is 9 meters per second, and we don't know what the final speed is. All right. Now, with our picture, as always, we do want to very clearly label for ourselves what we mean by before and what we mean by after before we start asking yes or no questions that involve us thinking about these two spots. All right. So in our table of information, we've been asking the same questions over and over. And I want us to recognize exactly how each new situation that looks very different than before is still applying those same yes or no questions. Kinetic energy is asking, are we moving? At the start of the problem, we are definitely moving. We're given a number value. So the answer is yes, and we plug in here the term. At the end of the problem, we are definitely moving because that's what we're trying to solve for. There's no confusion or there should not be confusion about these yes or no questions if we are actively thinking about the situation rather than trying to guess based on previous situations we've seen. There's a big difference here between trying to memorize examples that we look at and being able to understand the process that we've applied to those examples. The potential energy from gravity, we're asking ourselves, are we higher? At the bottom of the circle, the answer is no. We are not higher at the bottom of the circle than at other points in the problem. But at the top of the circle, certainly, we are indeed higher than we were at other points. It is in just a few more examples where we will actually have non-zero spring potential energy, but I just want to label it here as a couple of zeros as well, just to remind ourselves that it's coming up. All right, now we're looking for a work term. This is going to be any force that we haven't dealt with that can provide or take away energy from the problem. And I want us to think about something important here. At any point in this circular motion, if we were to catch the block partway around its circle, the only forces acting on it are gravity straight down, which we have already been dealing with, with this potential energy from gravity term, and tension, which points directly towards the center of the circle. Now, at all points in this motion, the direction that we are moving is tangent to the circle, 
and the tension is perpendicular to it. There's always this 90 degree angle here, which means tension cannot provide a work term. It is a force that it exi that exists, but it is not a force that is ever in the direction of motion. So there's no work term from that. All right, so we go back to our same tool we've been using each time. And I know that it can feel like wasted time to write this out each time in your notes, but you need to make sure to recognize that this, this consistent practice of doing these steps over and over builds up mental muscle memory, basically. In the same way that if you have ridden a bike, it is easier to ride a bike later on. If you are going through all of the correct steps every time, it is significantly easier to be able to do all of those steps at test time. If we are constantly cutting corners early on when we're training ourselves, then we can't expect ourselves to be able to handle anything at test time when we don't have all of the tools in front of us. So keep that in mind as you're doing all of this. Nothing is ever wasted energy, uh, energy. Nothing is ever wasted time if you are practicing the process that will be used at tests and exams. All right, so we have put in all of the terms from our yes and no questions here above, keeping in mind that the reason I always write out these zeros is to train myself that we looked for those terms, to have this consistent process that we're applying so that we can handle absolutely any new situation we come across. All right, so we have one half times two times nine squared. On the left, on the right, we have one half times two times V final squared plus two times 9.8 times 2.4. All right, so when we simplify that, we have 81 on the left. On the right side, this first term, one half times two is one times V squared and then 2 times 9.8 times 2.4 is 47. So we subtract 47 from both sides. I know it's right near the bottom, so let me give myself a little more space. So what this looks like, on the left we have 81 minus 47, which is 34. And on the right we have V final squared. So to get our final result, we take the square root of both sides and we will get 5.8 meters per second is equal to that final speed that we're looking for at the top of the circle. Now an easy check for us to make sure that that's a reasonable number is it should be slower than when we were at the bottom of the circle because gravity has been slowing us down. We had all of our energy in one term at the start of this uh, situation and we had to split it, we had to share energy between being able to be moving and being able to be higher. So our quick checks uh, to see if it makes sense is we should have expected a number smaller than nine. That's it for this example, so I will see you in the next one.